there's something that all Olympic recurve archers use. You see them all using it. This thing, this piece of equipment. Some may think it's cheating or an aid in shooting, whatever you may call it. It really does give them an edge in the release, in the shot process, and just in the handling of the bow and the forces exerted by the bow during the shot. No, not the sight, not the stabilizer, the finger sling. A wrist wrap because the bow might fall out of your hands. Push pull. What is that? Push pull. Well, your bow arm is pushing and your release hand is pulling, pulling a string. Push pull. Um, but it's, it's more than that. It's after release. You want to maintain that direction. You maintain that push. You maintain that pull. So your bow arm maintains that direction forward the push and your release hand maintains that direction backward or the pull going back and you want to keep this directional straight line pointing to the target with your bow hand well the arrow after it leaves the string the string and the bow limbs they have inertia and they want to keep going forward um, what stops it is your hand holding on to it and then you get the sensation of hand shock um, well, what the finger sling allows that hand shock and that energy to transfer and keep going, uh, not up through your hand and your arm, and it allows your, your push, you can maintain that direction, that push after release with your hand and your arm, and the pull with your release with your release hand. Okay, you need a little wrist wrap for a 25 pound bow that might fall out of your hands. That's on you. That's a. You gotta lower your bow shoulder. Lower your bow shoulder. You always hear that. Lower your bow shoulder. But why? Why? Well, what does is, what is lowering your bow shoulder do? If you think about it. If you literally try to just like lower your bow shoulder, if you pull your shoulder down with your arm by your side, what's happening there is you're, there's certain back muscles that are engaging. And if you take your other arm and cross it over your shoulder and feel those muscles engaging as you like pull your shoulder down, you'll feel it's, it's the muscles that are right under your shoulder blade. Now, when you lift your arm up, if you keep your hand there, as you lift your arm up, you feel that there's a certain spot when your arm goes above 90 degrees where you feel those muscles start to engage and tense up. So the, the lifting of the arm, the front bow arm, if you also, as you, as you put your hand on the top of your shoulder, where your shoulder, uh, the ball meets the socket. And as you lift your arm up, you'll feel right at 90 and above, a little cup forms, and your shoulder actually dips. It's right past 90 when that happens. So once that happens, that is really the lowest point your shoulder can be. When your arm is raised above, your hand is above your shoulder, your shoulder is going to be low, right? Yeah, it makes sense. You can't get any lower because your hand's not above it. So the, lifting your arm up over past 90 lowers your shoulder, forms that little divot, and as you bring it back to 90, that divot stays, and your shoulder stays in that lower position. But you need to bring it past 90 for that to occur.